and welcome to Matters of the Heart radio show with me, your host, Wendy Torres. I'm so delighted to have you here with me today, and I have a very special treat for you. I love my guest that I have in the studio today. She's a very dear and precious friend and um, and co-laborer with me, and she's helped me to host some conferences over the past year. I want to remind you that you can reach out to me by visiting my website, mattersoftheheart.org. That's mattersoftheheart.org. And I want you to remember that I want to hear from you. I want to know what's happening um, in your heart, what matters are on your heart, so that I can address them on the show and or be in prayer for you. I want to help Um, bring a greater understanding and tools into your life that will benefit you. So know that I am here for you. I want to welcome to the show this evening, Mrs. Linda Sutton. Miss Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you, Miss Wendy, for having me here. Um, I... I think you are absolutely one of the most gentle, spirited, and precious people I have ever known. And I am so glad that we have the opportunity to share your story today. Miss Linda, I know that um, you've walked through a few different valleys in life, but as this, this is the week leading up to Easter, and we're talking about God's resurrection power, I think it's exemplified in one of these stories that we're going to share from your life. Um, can you kind of begin to tell us a little bit about this valley that we were talking about before the show so we can fill our friends in? Yes, I sure can. What I experienced was um, something that I never thought that I would have to go through, and that was finding out that I was uh, diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Mm. Now, how old were you when this happened, if you don't mind me asking? Was it three years ago? Uh, 50, right before my 50th birthday. And 50 is a big landmark. I think... um, I think that that's we probably anticipate some big things happening as we turn into a new decade in our life. And you were a mom. Well, I know you're still a mom. Yes. But I'm just <laughs> saying at the time, you were a mom with two kids. Um, and they were about how old at that time? Uh, my daughter, who was in college, uh, she was 20 at the time. And my son, uh, nine. Okay. So one at home and one away at college. And as a mom, when they told you that you were diagnosed with this thyroid cancer, um, I would imagine that was quite a scary moment for you. Can you take us there? Uh, Yes, I can. And I believe one of the reasons I was um, really having problems with the diagnosis is because as a teenager myself at uh, 18, I had to go through the same thing with my mother. Mm. Uh, although she was a 22-year cancer survivor, just the fact that she was diagnosed uh, at when I was 18 was very, very difficult for me because of thinking that she was not going to make it. Mm-hmm. So I believe that once I was diagnosed around the same age she was, wow, yes, around the same age she was, I was just replaying that and thought, what could I do to keep my children from having to go through what I felt? Mm. So it was not just that you were concerned about your children, but you had kind of already walked in their shoes and knew what they would be experiencing as you'd walked through this with your own mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? Did you just have a sore throat one day? What made you even think that something was wrong? Well, um, when I look back, the symptoms that I had, and after I researched, I realized that some of the problems that I had was uh, staying hoarse. I, I don't sing, but I realized that I couldn't carry a tune like I used to, and just keeping a sore neck. But I thought, again, that was uh, just from you know the way that I slept. And also, I began to have weight loss, but I wasn't really concerned about the weight loss because I thought, okay, high school, skinny, I'm looking pretty nice, but I didn't make the connection. But what drove me to go to the doctor was having a sore tonsils that I hadn't had in years. Okay. And so decided to go for that. And then what happened? And after that, my doctor uh, just basically felt around and uh, on my neck and 
didn't really give me any information, but he just said that you need to go see an ENT. And again, I didn't think anything of it until I got to the doctor's office, and that particular doctor um, felt around on my neck and just nonchalantly said, oh, it could be cancer, and walked out. Oh, just just cancer. Just cancer, and walked out and didn't come back. Oh. And so that just left me just going through my mind, just devastated, because for one, I'd never heard of that, and then also thinking of what is a thyroid, you know, although I had anatomy class, but again, just where is it, you know, just all the things that were going through my mind. And although my my mom had breast cancer, I thought that I was just going in because of swollen tonsils. Mm. I never made, possibly made the connection because I'd never heard of thyroid cancer. Sure. And so you, what happens after that? Well, after I left the office and I just decided that I was not going back there because um, he just didn't seem compassionate enough. Mm -hmm. And I was researching and looking for another doctor because I thought if I have to walk this path, I need someone that um, is going to be with me. But I did not know at the time that God was really aligning a person who was very knowledgeable and compassionate that will help me with the miracle that was about to come. Right, okay, so you found another doctor, and then what happened? Yes, um, that doctor decided that I needed uh, a sonogram, which, again, is just an X-ray of of your neck to see what is going on. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, I also needed a needle biopsy. Mm -mm. (laughs) No, 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 no. No. Okay, go ahead. A needle biopsy, which I'm, I'm... not afraid of needles, okay. so it didn't bother me at all. And, and basically, that was just drawing fluid to see if there were any, you know, cells or anything. And that came back uh, inconclusive. But again, because the mass was there from the sonogram, it was pressing on my trachea, oh. which meant that um, I was going to have difficulty breathing. So after that, the doctor felt that it was time to go in and uh, remove, remove and the so mass. And so were you having a hard time breathing already at this point? No, the only thing that I noticed, again, was just um, being hoarse Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, from time to time a sore throat and a sore neck. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that it was pressing. And so they were going in for the biopsy, and now they're telling you surgery. And do they tell you what you can expect when you go into surgery? I did not go into details as far as uh, what to expect, just the recovery part after the surgery. Okay. What were you thinking would happen? Well, I just, you know, thought, I mean, I've had surgeries in the past, so I, but just the fact that I was having surgery on my neck, I wasn't um, uh, just not sure exactly what would happen mm-hmm. as far as, um, you know, the, the recovery part. Mm-hmm. Because, well, one thing they did say is the possibility that, you know, my vocal cords could be, you know, cut or something, mm-hmm. you not be able to talk. And being a teacher, mm-hmm. I definitely have to be able to talk. Right. <laughs> so you go in for surgery. Were you scared? Um, what am I trying to say? Were you scared for your children at that point? And did you feel optimistic that things were going to be okay? Or was there something bother you, bothering you down deep inside? Well, initially, uh, I think with any type of surgery or going through, you're just, you know, putting your life in the hands of of the doctors. Mm -hmm. And again, just praying that God is going to guide them Mm -hmm. and do, you know, what they need to do to uh, take care of you. And I would like to say that uh, I was a trooper and just um, had unwavering faith and everything. But I had those moments, you know, where I was just the question, why? Mm-hmm. You know, why am I going through this? Um, mm-hmm. I already had a lot of stress in my life at the time, and just to add that, you know, on was quite difficult. But I do a lot of journal writing, and um, but it, it just brought me to a place of just knowing God. I mean, you know, people always talk about knowing of God, mm-hmm. but when you have to walk something like this, yes. You know him. In a completely different way, right? You do. It's very personal. It is. And so you go through the surgery, you come out of surgery, and then what happens? Well, after uh, surgery, um, I had to see an oncologist because that's usually a follow-up whenever you have a, a, a diagnosis. And I went to the oncologist, and he said that 
you know, no cancer is good cancer, you know, because of the invasion of the body and all the things that you go through. But if you are diagnosed with one, thyroid is one that is, is treatable. Okay. And when they went in for the surgery, did they find everything okay or did they not? Well, uh, based on uh, looking at it just from, you know, an eye view, according to the doctor, everything, you know, looked benign. It looked, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the pathology report, you know, came back uh, just showing leaning more towards benign. I see. Yes, when I went in surgery, um, I was told that they would remove half of my thyroid, which had the mass on the right side. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, from the pathology report, if it showed that, you know, that it was malignant, they would have to go back in and remove the other side. She was wanting to save it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, the report, she was not, uh, I won't say she won't, she wasn't pleased. She was saying that she wanted uh, she was not satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to send the report off to another lab mm -hmm. to have them to make sure because she said, again, it wasn't good enough. She wanted to make sure. Okay. So they've removed half of your thyroid. You're out of surgery. They've let you know. You've gone to see an oncologist. He's telling you if you know cancer is good, but if you have to have cancer, this is the kind because we can treat it. And where do you go emotionally from there? Pulling on family and friends mm -hmm. and, and the faith that I know that my family has covered from, from many, many years. Mm -hmm. And just, again, also knowing that I had a place where I could go when I was alone because the, the hardest part is having family and friends around during the day, but at night. Right. At night, mm -hmm. when everyone's asleep, mm -hmm. everyone's doing whatever they, you know, want to do, right. then you have that alone time. Sure. Then you're kind of left with your thoughts and, and even fears um, and the what-ifs. And I would guess that you were probably going from one end of the spectrum to the other. I did. I heard uh, two voices. One voice said, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. This is it. You're not going to make it. And then I heard another voice that said, you're my child. Mm -hmm. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And I chose to go with the second voice. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> I say go with that. I say go with that voice. That's the voice of the Lord um, speaking in your favor. And so then what happens? You've had a surgery. You've been to the oncologist. And now what happens next? Well, you're waiting for the results, right? Yes, waiting for the results. And so uh, my doctor asked me to come back in because she had gotten the results from the other uh, lab. And the way that she described it is that they went through extensive testing. They cut the tissue every way they could possibly cut it. And, you know, by the grace of God, small cells were found. They were hiding. Wow. And so then what did that mean for you? Did it mean more surgery? Yes, it meant more surgery. She uh, said that we need to go ahead and just remove your whole thyroid. Mm. And were you worried? Were you scared? Were you at peace? What, what, what was going on inside of you? Well, um, the first time going through surgery, because it is a neck surgery, I was really concerned about it. But uh, the recovery was great. I, you know, spent time off. Uh, I was told not to, you know, speak and use my voice, and I uh, just rest, and it was a very good recovery. I mean, it was, I went through, didn't have to take any kind of pain medication, and so with having to go through it the second time, I mean, I didn't want to, mm -hmm. but because I had already gone through, I knew, you know, what to expect. Right, and right. And so the second surgery uh, was, you know, successful as well. Okay, and... Um I remember getting a text message from you a few months back, and it was one of the best text messages I think I've ever received in my life. Tell me what led to that text message, and let's tell our friends what it said. Yes, uh, it's been three years since I uh, first heard the first diagnosis, and I call this part the blessing because I had to go um, 
to have another exam, a sonogram, just, uh, and so when I got the report, the report stated results, no evidence of recurrence. Wow. Cancer marker in blood undetectable. Wow. That is amazing. I was just so moved because God is faithful and he and his power and the power of his name is greater and mightier than the name of cancer. Um, I know that sometimes we can start off in our journey one way like you did with that first doctor and think that this is it, but really it isn't. And I love it that you continue to pursue someone else until you found like you found someone that you connected with. Um, And it sounds like you were right on in your heart there because she really took your case to heart and gave it her best, it sounds like to me. Um, I would encourage listeners that are are listening to us now to say, I would say the same thing to them. Find someone that you connect with. If you're sick and there's something going on, find someone that you connect with and that you really believe has your best interest in mind. What would you say to that, Miss Linda? Yes, I'm in total agreement because... um, Again, any time that you're going through any type of situation, uh, sickness, death, uh, just anything that is causing you to really have moments of of doubt, Mm -hmm. yes, you pull on a higher power for one, Yes, and then ask God to lead you to the people that are going to give you the comfort and care and uh, just help you through the journey and give you victory. Right. I agree. Um, Was there a particular scripture or anything like that that you held on to during this time when you were journeying through that valley? Yes. uh, One was um, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. Which says? Well, uh, I know the plans that I have for you. I'm just paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one uh, that really that I held on to was that by his stripes, I'm healed. That's right. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is powerful because the Lord does say that he knows the plans that he has for us, plans to give us a future and a hope, one for good and not evil. And obviously he does have a remarkable plan for your future because you're still here. Yes. They're saying they cannot even detect this in your blood now. That is amazing. Um, Would you please pray for our listeners that may have received a bad report, a bad diagnosis, or that maybe they are walking through through their own valley of of health struggles, Um, wherever they may be? Would you pray for them? Yes, I sure will. Heavenly Father, I ask you to come and touch our listeners, ones that you know that are extremely afraid of perhaps a diagnosis that they receive themselves or one that they are walking with other family members. I ask you to give them the strength to know that you are with them and that you will hold their hand and carry them through this valley to the place that you know that they will come out with a victory. And also, Lord, to be able to guide them that they one day will be able to stand before anyone and be a testimony and know that the power that you give is the power that they receive to be able to spread the love, the light, and the comfort for anyone who needs their power and strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Miss Linda, would you have any last bit of encouragement or advice for anyone who is going through this or they know someone who is and they're trying to support them? Yes. Uh, the um, What I would like to just basically encourage anyone that not to delay any time that you feel that something is wrong because mm-hmm. your body will always give telltale signs do not ignore it always be pre- proactive about anything that is going on and to just seek out help um, just talk with anyone just not keep it to yourself mm-hmm. and think that it's you know just gonna you know go away sometimes it does but for the most part just be able to reach out find a support system uh, just If you don't have a family, 
then there's uh, friends or just some type of support you know for you Mm -hmm. definitely I agree with you it's good to not journey alone during these times Um, and you may feel alone and I want you to know that even though you may feel alone God's word says that he is always with us and Jesus said he'll be with us until the end and he's already there whatever that may look like for you he's there where you're at now he's there for your tomorrow and your next week or month or year He's already there, and he's got this, and he's got you in the palm of his hand, and no one can snatch you out. And I'll speak that same word over you that Linda held on to in her own life. And the Lord would say to you, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of good and not evil, and to give you a future and a hope. So today, while you have breath in your lungs, give him praise. That was one of my intentions for having Miss Linda here. It's to give the Lord praise because he is alive and well. And his power knows no limits and knows no bounds. But oh, how he delights when we turn our hearts towards him and we seek him. And when we trust him. When we trust him on the mountaintops, when things are great and wonderful, and it may feel like things are coming easy, and when we trust him in the valleys where things may feel dark and we can't see the next step in front of us, he will give you what you need when you need it. His mercy and his grace is new every day. So today, if tomorrow seems overwhelming, I want to remind you what it says in Lamentations chapter 3, that every morning... God's mercies are new, and his faithfulness is great. So you can't worry about tomorrow, really, because you don't have the mercy for that day yet. You'll have new mercy for tomorrow and the problems that you face tomorrow. And today you have the mercy for today and the challenges that you face today. So just look at today and trust your tomorrow in his hands, because you never know what surprises may be in store for you and who is praying for you, and how God may show up in your life. could be in some expected ways and unexpected ways. But he alone is God, and he has the right to choose and how he's going to do that. His ways are higher than ours, and his thoughts higher than ours, but they are always for your good. Well, my precious friends, I thank you for listening to the show one more time, and And listening to my sweet friend, Miss Linda, I just love her and appreciate all that she's done and been for me in my life. And I know that you've been blessed too. If you would like to reach her, you can contact her through my office. And you can do that by going to mattersoftheheart.org. That's mattersoftheheart.org. We would love to have your feedback on today. Any words of encouragement uh, would be much appreciated. And of course, your prayers and financial support as well as we um, are responsible for paying for our airtime and bringing these words of encouragement to you. Now, remember that what matters to your heart matters to God's. And if it matters to your heart and it matters to God's heart, it matters to mine. And I want to be um, a light in your world to help bring you tools and to be a voice however you might need it. So, like me on Facebook. Help me to get those likes up at uh, Matters of the Heart Radio Show. That's Matters of the Heart Radio Show. And again, send me an email or contact me on my website at mattersoftheheart.org. I look forward to hearing from you soon.